Welcome to Mampiche, Ecuador. This is a small fishing village in the southern part of the Esmeraldas province on the northern coast of Ecuador. There's not a lot of things here to do and so maybe that's why this spot has stayed off the best places to visit in Ecuador along the familiar tourist trail. But actually this is why you should come here. This village has not been run over by tourism. You can still see local life, see the fishermen. You can go surfing here. But the best part of Mampiche is there's not a lot to do and that's exactly why you're gonna wanna stay. Good morning. So, one of the most popular things to do in Mampiche is to go to Playa Negra. Now, if you've got a car, you can actually drive there. You can also get one of these uh, moto taxis to take you there. Um, but can you believe, I actually said to Andreas, let's walk there. So it's a three kilometer walk. You do need to pay attention to the tide times because you need to go at low tide. So right now it is 6.30 a.m., which is low tide. So we should have more than enough time to walk around the beach and get to Playa Negra. So this is low tide. So if you're not from a coastal area like I am, what happens is, is the water comes in and out. And so you can see where it was higher tide, it's still wet. But if you're going to do a beach walk or anything, you really need to know the tide times. And thankfully, La Casa Monpiche gives them to you. So we knew that 6.30 was low tide time. Um, so we've got much more of the beach to explore. We are currently on Monpiche Beach, which is a dark sand beach, actually pretty dark. So I'm very curious to see what Playa Negra will look like because I would actually consider this a dark sand, almost a black sand beach. But we're gonna hopefully be able to take this beach out around the perimeter and walk along the coast to Playa Negra. That's what people said we could do. Although now looking at it, we're not sure. So the alternative is there is a shortcut here you can um, take, but it goes along the highway at some point. So not as interesting. We're just gonna take it as it goes. We might have to turn around and walk back and that's fine. And then if you watched my video about Mindo and Mashpee, I talked about the Choco Bio region. So the Choco Bio region is one of the most diverse areas in the world. Now, it runs from Panama through Colombia down to Ecuador. Ecuador only has 2% left and that's part of this region. So this is a tropical forest that we're seeing right here, which is different from a rainforest. When you come to Ecuador, you learn that there are like so many kinds of rainforest. So this might look like the same as a rainforest, but there are lots of types of forests here. Ecuador is so diverse and it's just really interesting learning about all of these different areas and why they're special. I think it's easy to see like these trees and brush and say oh this end of the beach it would be great to develop it's so gorgeous it looks out onto this point but these are actually mangroves so an important part of the ecosystem um, and they really need to keep this balance where they don't overdevelop because the environment does need these mangroves Okay, so good news and bad news. The good news is we ran into local at the end of the beach and she said, yes, you can walk out at low tide, but you can't get to Playa Negra. You can only get to the first beach, which I think is Playa Ostional. But, so we will do a little bit of a beach walk, but then we actually have to come back. The good news on that is though, there is supposed to be a really interesting cemetery here, and then we will walk around to Playa Negra. As I said, we've got so much time. Sun is coming out. It is beautiful. I am happy to have this walk today. So, Montpiche Beach is called Playa Verde. We are going to walk to Playa Ostional and then come back and then we're going to walk to Playa Negra. Look at this tree sitting on a rock and then when the tide comes in, it has enough water to grow. It's gigantic.
These rocks are wet and slimy. Definitely need good shoes. Oh, it's really beautiful out here. Looking into these tidal pools reminds me of grade five science when we went out to Hull's Harbor. All right, it's just you and me and your friend. Oh, wow, look up here. This is what we're coming up to. So this is interesting. This is all metal right here. And you can actually see some like grid lines here, squares. So at one point, something was here. I think those are blue-footed boobies out there that he's getting. This is so cool. So you can find the blue-footed boobies here which I have seen in the Galapagos, but what's interesting is in the Galapagos, they nest on the ground, and I think that's because they don't have any predators. But out here, there are more humans, more predators, and so they actually nest on the cliffs there. There are a number of places along the coast that you can see the blue-footed boobies, but this is the closest we've gotten so far. It was definitely worth a walk. Sun is out, surfers are out, it looks like fishermen are starting to get out as the tide comes in, but we still have more beach to see, so we're going to go and take the trail, which I think goes through a cemetery, and then also uh, to Playa Negra, the duck beach. There are tons of cicadas out right now, so it's 8.30 a.m., and like the forest is just humming from these noises. So this is a trail, and right there it actually says you can walk to Portete, Isla Portete, three kilometers, Playa Negra, one kilometer. So not far at all. I think this actually is normally a cafe at the end of the beach, which is quite nice. But this walk should be pretty easy. It looks like it's a road that goes to the highway. Unfortunately, we can hear some dogs, and they seem to be scaring the birds. You can hear tons of birds out here. Can you hear the sound right now? It's so intense. Everything's waking up. So a couple things you're definitely gonna need here. You need to protect yourself against the sun. So lots of sunscreen, bring it with you. You're gonna have to reapply. I've been wearing 50 and you can see I'm actually getting quite darker. You need a hat. You also need to prepare for the bug. So this is a hot, humid environment with a lot of nature, you can hear it. Also a lot of mosquitoes. So you do need to bring um, really good bug repellent and then also I recommend doing this in advance is getting some after cream for the bugs because they bite your ankles and oh it is itchy so this tropical forest that I talked about it's all been clear-cut here and on the other side as well and this is why this is a cattle area the forest was taken down was to raise cattle for meat consumption not for dairy but also one of the other things we noticed is around here mosquitoes are vicious and because cows bring mosquitoes and I know you're thinking probably like but wait a minute didn't you just have uh, a bunch of beef and you you eat meat and and all of these things and yes I do but I think it's just important as meat eaters as consumers that we realize what we're doing what it impacts that you know choosing to eat meat here isn't just uh, eating a hamburger isn't just about eating a hamburger it means that they have to cut down you know these forests to raise the cattle to make the hamburger here so I'm not gonna lie it has made me start to think about some things. We made it. It looks like it is walking only, but I can hear the water.
So we made it to Playa Negra, also known as Black Sand Beach. This beach really is black. It didn't look like black from above, but it is black. And that's because there's some, uh, probably some volcanic activity affected it. There are no volcanoes in the area, but maybe at some point some ash came down here. It's very high in iron and titanium. And for that reason, uh, mining companies were actually illegally taking sand from here for construction. However, in recent years, people have really um, become aware of this and are stopping it. There's actually a Facebook group to save Playa Negra because this is a really special spot and not a place that we should be mining at all. It's so lush, the sand is so black, and then other than one family, you know, having breakfast here, we are the only people here. It's beautiful. It's really beautiful. This is a place where people come, but there is no development here whatsoever. Got this bird over there. I think it's a heron. I don't think I would want to go swimming here, but I wouldn't be surprised if people go surfing here. These waves are much bigger. the sand. It's dark, but it's so soft. It's like powdery sand. And then it has, I think, silica in it. And so it actually sparkles. I noticed I have sparkles all over me too. Ah, oh, it's gorgeous. So this is absolutely one of the best beaches in Ecuador. One of the most beautiful beaches. Soft sand. The water is so blue. It is gorgeous out here. There's zero garbage. It's fantastic. Sadly, we're leaving, but we are going back into town. I think it's time for lunch soon. So Andreas was telling me a little bit more about what he heard about this spot. So back in 2010, the government had given a permit here for artisanal mining. Now, that's what you think it is. It's like small batch mining, not bringing in like big tractors and things. However, apparently during that time, the locals supported it because the mining companies, like they always do, promised them infrastructure and a bunch of other things. Well, it's 12 years later, as you can see, none of that is here. But what happened was, these mining companies also brought in a bunch of tractors and clearly not artisanal mining, and foreigners saw it. So foreigners saw it, started talking about it on social media, and then Ecuadorians discovered that this artisanal mining wasn't so artisanal. Anyway, social media for the good this time because it actually stopped it. And so that is why people are having their eyes on this at all times because this is a special place and it should not be mined. Back to the beach and this comedor right here. So. She has drinks out front, but she said that if people come by, she will make them something to eat if they're hungry. And then this is usually open on the weekends, but sometimes she's just here like today, just catching up on stuff. We are at Vista Al Mar, which is right on the water. And we made a decision based on almuerzo. So almuerzo is a set lunch. You get a drink, a soup, a main. They were pretty much the same. Although over here, you could also get steak or chicken. Why? Oh, we did get that yesterday, but really we're on the coast, so we wanted to have some seafood. The Sancocho has arrived. It's hot. It looks really interesting. So Sancocho is the name for so many different kinds of soup. This one is thicker. It's a little bit brown, so I think there's some mani in there. And it's a Sancocho de Pescado, so a uh, fish Sancocho. And it has so much fish. Fish looks so good. I think I could have just gotten this. We've got some yuca, so that is always fantastic. Look at that fish. Mmm. Mmm. This is amazing soup. And they make their own ahi. This is a good sign. I have so much food. I have too much food. I probably should have got the soup and you could have had the main dish. Yeah, we're dumb. We are so dumb. That's usually what we do, but... We were hungry today. But now my eyes are definitely bigger than my belly. I have this huge filet, a plate of food, a whole sancocho, which has a lot of fish in it. They are very generous here. This is $3.
All right, so Andreas got five shrimp. He was generous enough to give me one of them. Breaded shrimp, I would say this is a nice breading. Yeah. Feels very it's light very compared to the other empanada we've had. Mmm, mmm, mm hmm. Let me try my fish. I didn't even think about the Sancocho and the Pescado having so much fish that I shouldn't order fish. But here we are. I am jealous of the shrimp, but this the, is really good. Of the one shrimp. Apanado, a shrimp, is six bucks. Most of the ceviche, the ceviche starts at six for um, shrimp goes all the way to eight if you want to get lobster ceviche. Actually, the prices here are pretty good. So everything is pretty much from main plate, six or seven dollars, which I would say on the coast, that's a good deal. Like it's a, it's pretty standard. To have the restaurant that's facing the ocean and only serving six or seven dollars is pretty good. The most expensive thing here is the arroz marinero. And so that is rice with lots of seafood on top and that's 10 bucks. Kristen for sharing with me that she came here to La Casa Monpiche to stay and I saw the pictures and I wanted to come. I want to also thank La Casa Monpiche for having us for two nights. We are in a suite. So there's a suite and then above us there are some bedrooms. It's quite small, like a small little lot which I like. It's not a huge party place. Uh, right here I've got my very own hammock and then the view of the lot it's really quite nice you've got some tents back there the owner's house and then the ocean and as we come in let me show you the suite so what was great about this place is actually you have a full kitchen we did not cook at all that's actually my laptop right there Wi-Fi here was so good and then also I was able to work we were able to get organized here nice size fridge always had like cold water We've also got some water there, some composting. This is fantastic for families or groups of friends because then you've got uh, a double there, a single, double, single, and then there is no air conditioning, but there is a fan. Honestly, that's really all you need. And then you've got this washroom, you've got the sink, and then you've got enough room. No hot water, just cold water. I don't know any place on the coast, the northern coast, that has hot water. That's the ocean right there. You hear it at night, it's beautiful. We would have stayed longer in Montpiche if this place was available. But this suite is so popular because it's very affordable that it's booked tonight, which is really, really sad. But we loved Montpiche, so I think I would love to come back to do more of it and highly recommend it here. It's just like close to the center but far away from the parties if you want to go somewhere and have a drink it's great but if you just want to come back and rest which is what we did then you can do that and not too loud at all so if you're more of a camper type there are two options you can bring your own tent or they also have tents here with equipped with beds and then here you have washrooms if you're staying in the tent you come through, oh, there's a really nice breeze here. And then you have a full kitchen. Ah, and the sound of the ocean here. So I'm guessing these are the spots if you want to bring your own tent. And then the really nice thing, oh, laundry here, is there's parking, which if you have a car is so important. So there was room for us and someone else to park here. 